Hey, what's up everybody? Patrick here. Welcome back and moving on to another question. We have a couple of limits to deal with here. So let's start off with the first one. So we got the limit as x approaches 4 of 4. What is that going to equal? Well, as we've mentioned before, the limit as x approaches a number of a constant is always just going to equal that constant. So the answer to this is 4. So it doesn't really matter what x value we're approaching. It could have said 5 here, 10, whatever. The fact that this is a constant here, it's always going to equal that constant. Because if you are to take this function and graph it, it's actually just a straight line, a horizontal line, y equals 4. So as we approach any x value on the line, the y value is always going to approach 4. So the answer to this limit is just 4. Next, we got the limit as x approaches 1 over 5 of the square root of 5x plus 8. First thing you want to check with limits is can you make a direct substitution? Because if you can, then the function is continuous at that point, and it's going to approach that y value from both sides. And notice with this, we can make a direct substitution. So if we plug in 1 over 5 into this function, 5 times 1 over 5 gives us 1, plus 8 is 9. Square root of 9 is just 3. So the answer to this limit is 3. And we did that with direct substitution. Moving on to the next one, we got limit as x approaches 0 of x minus 6 over x. First thing you want to check, can you make a direct substitution? In this case, we can. If we plug in 0 for x, notice how the denominator will be 0. So next thing you want to check is, can you factor? stuff. Well, notice you can't factor a numerator, you can't factor the denominator, so we're not in a really good place here. So one thing we can do with this is graph it. If you remember from advanced functions, this is basically a linear over a linear function, and there's going to be a vertical asymptote at an x value of 0. There's also going to be a horizontal asymptote at a y value of 1 because the ratio of the leading coefficients is just 1. There's also going to be an x-intercept that's 6. So if we graph this, it's going to look approximately like this. And notice that the limit at an x value of 0 is not going to exist, because as we approach, 0 from the left side of this function. Let's just label this uh, function here as f of x. Well, the y values are going to approach positive infinity. And as we approach the x value of 0 from the right side of this function, notice the y values are going to approach negative infinity. So because they're approaching two different values, this limit here does not exist. Right? You could have also made a table of values, so you could approach an x value 0 from the uh, left side by maybe picking numbers like um, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, just getting closer and closer to that x value 0 from the negative side, you would notice that the y values approach positive infinity, and then same thing from the positive side, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, you'd see the y values approach negative infinity. So the limit doesn't exist because we're approaching different y values. And then finally, the last one, limit as x approaches negative 1 of x squared minus 4x minus 5 all over x squared minus 2x minus 3. First thing you always check, can you make a direct substitution? Well, in this case, if we plug in an x value of negative 1 into this function, we would get 0 over 0. So that's not going to work. Next thing you check is, can you factor this function? And notice that we can factor it in both the numerator and the denominator. x squared minus 4x minus 5, that's going to factor into x minus 5, x plus 1. And then the bottom, x squared minus 2x minus 3, that's going to factor into x minus 3, x plus 1. 
And now notice how the x plus ones will cancel out. So we know that this function, because these cancel out, there's going to be a whole at x equals negative one. So we end up with the limit as x approaches negative one of x minus five over x minus three. And notice now with this remaining function, we can make a direct substitution. And when we substitute negative one, negative one minus five, that would give us negative six in the numerator, negative one minus three, that would give us negative four. And that just simplifies to positive three over two or positive 1.5. So that is the limit here. Now for to show this graphically, if we take this function here and graph it, so that's just a linear over a linear function. So notice there's gonna be a vertical asymptote at an X value of three. So that's gonna be here. There's gonna be a horizontal asymptote at a Y value of one, the ratio of the leading coefficients. We can also find the intercepts of this function. So the Y intercept, we would just plug in zero for X. We'd end up with negative five over negative three which is like positive 1.67, which is up here above that y value of one. And then uh, the x-intercept happens when the numerator is equal to zero. So when is x minus five equal to zero? Well, I have an x value of five here. So if we draw this out, it's gonna look something like this. However, this graph is incomplete for this function because there's a hole add an x value of negative one. So add an x value of negative one, there is a hole right there. And that hole is happening at a y value of three over two. Right, so without the hole, it would be this function, but since we canceled out that x plus one factor before, we have to include that hole there. So the limit as x approaches negative one, notice that if we're approaching the y, uh, that x value negative one from both sides for this function, it's gonna approach that same y value of three over two, hence the limit exists and it's equal to three over two.